Hello everyone, thank you for joining in. Um, today we are covering Sterlite Power. We'll just wait for another minute for people to join in, but uh, we'll get started within the next 30 seconds. Great. So I think uh, everyone is here, so let's get started. So today we are covering a very interesting company uh, called Sterlite Power Transmission. So before we get started, uh, what I wanted to do differently in this uh, webinar is just take an understanding from the audience in the sense that is there anything specific which they would want uh, us to cover as a part of this webinar. And you know, if you have any questions, we would request you to just type it out in the chat box and we will try and cover it as a part of the presentation itself instead of doing it all at the end. So just put in your questions, anything you would want uh, to be answered regarding Sterlite Power right at the beginning, right? So in the meantime, that the questions come in, let's get started with the presentation. So essentially what Sterlite does is it is, it is a transmission company, right? And power is a growing, uh, need of the hour for the for a country like india so let's first look at how does india's power requirements play out or why is there such a huge demand for power in india so we'll start today's presentation with a small understanding of overall uh, power demand for india so in india like you can see the urban population as a percentage of the total population has been going growing from uh, a base of 11 percent to 36 percent and as your population grows, so does the requirement for the overall uh, power consumption in India. Along with this, what we see is that the per capita consumption of electricity is also going up. And this is all very, uh, you know, basic in the sense that everyone understands that as population is urbanizing, as we are using more gadgets, as we are charging more cars, therefore all of this includes or uh, uh, requires more power to be generated. Now, before we move on to the next slide, we have to understand how the entire power space plays out and how essentially the power space plays out is there are three sets of uh, components to get uh, you know power delivered to your house so the first segment is the genco or the generating companies these are companies which are running thermal power plants renewable energy power plants hydroelectric power plants and these are generating the power or generating the electricity in one source next comes the transmission companies a transmission company what it basically does is it takes the power which is generated at the source and it distributes it or it takes it and uh, uh, moves it across to the centers of consumption so say the power might be generated at a hydroelectric plant near a, a, a seashore however the power finally might be consumed in a in a urban city like a delhi or a mumbai or a kolkata so this transmission of power from the source to the uh, point of consumption is done by a transmission company. The third leg is the one which actually brings the power from a local hub to your house, which is called a distribution company, which is basically the company which raises an invoice to you for the power which you have used in a month, right? And these are called discoms or distribution companies. So where Sterlite operates is in the middle of the generation companies and the distribution companies. So basically Sterlite's job is to take power from the generators and take it uh, and deliver it to the discoms. It does not generate power, it does not distribute power, it simply transmits power, right? So this gives us an understanding of where Sterlite plays out or where Sterlite is situated in the entire power cycle of India. Now let's see why transmission itself is a very interesting uh, a part of the power supply chain. For this, let us understand why there is a massive demand for transmission companies, right? So what we've seen is globally that there is a huge shift into companies which are now uh, looking to transition into green energy. So there have been a 755 US billion dollar investment globally into energy transition uh, in, in uh, globally. 
and this is 27% increase on a year on year basis and out of this 3366 billion has gone into invest into renewable energy in 2021 and if we compare and if we are try to understand the indian macroeconomic system especially with regard to power india has decided that it wants to raise the non fossil fuel based energy capacity of the country to 500 gigawatt by 2030 i think this figure is close to 100 gigawatt currently second it is trying to meet 50% of the overall energy's requirements by using renewable energies by 2030 Parallel to this, they are also trying to reduce the overall projected carbon emissions, reduce the carbon intensity by 45% and try to achieve net zero emissions in carbon and become carbon neutral by the year 2070. Now, why does India's efforts towards growing green or towards, uh, you know, so moving away from thermal energy to renewable energy uh, be important for a company like Sterlight Power Transmission? So how it generally plays out is thermal power is produced very close to the point of consumption. So like every city will have a thermal power consumption very close to it wherein the coal can be brought in and a coal powered thermal plant can actually produce electricity and transmit it to the nearby points of consumption. But as in when we move to work, move away from the thermal or uh, fossil fuel based energy generation to renewable energy generation the points of generation of electricity move a little further away from the point of actual consumption. And this basically requires a, a lot more cabling and, the, and a lot more transmission lines and a lot more transformer capacity to actually move this power which is generated near the renewable sites to the points of consumption. So this is why we feel that there is a huge demand for transmission lines to improve uh, overall in the country and also that globally. On a similar note, let's understand how the transmission uh, space has moved. So this, this graph on the left hand side shows us how India, what India has added in terms of transmission lines. So India has consistently added close to 15,000 circuit kilometers on an annualized basis. So FI 16, it was a little higher as we can see, it was close to 28,000 in FI 20 because of the pandemic, it was a little less. Again, FI 2021, it has recovered and FI 22 has also uh, moderated out a little. And on the right hand side is the transformation capacity added, which is an MVA. So a sum of these two things is the infrastructure which is required to move energy from the point of generation to the point of consumption. And on a similar note, as we can see in terms of total transmission line, in India, FI17, if you see, it had a total transmission capacity of 3,67,000 uh, uh, CKM. So CKM basically stands for circuit kilometers. And in FI22, it is expected to rise up to 4,75,000. 4, and in the next 10 years, it is expected to go up till a, a figure of 9 lakh uh, cubic uh, circuit kilometers. Now let's understand what is driving the demand and what is uh, restraining the overall demand for power. So the drivers for power are very, very uh, logical. So it is GDP growth. So as the overall industry grows, so as the overall economy grows, as the consumption power grows, people spend more, people use more electricity and therefore more, there's more demand for power. As the transformation capacity expands, therefore there is more need for power because there is more supply power. India specifically, there is an intensive rural electrification drive which is being driven by the government which under which it is trying to electrify or ensure that there is 24-7 uh, electricity available in all rural areas and this, this again enhances the need for the transmission to improve. And lastly, uh, government initiatives like Make in India and large scale infrastructures again require power transmission projects to be taken in, in full swing so that uh, areas where these manufacturing units are set up, they are well equipped to handle peak power loads. Now let us look at some factors which hinder the growth of power transmissions or reduce the uh, demand for power. So the first is energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is basically how, effect, how effectively you use energy or how effectively you are able to transmit it. TND loss is transmission and distribution loss. This is one factor which is of a huge concern as far as India goes because India has a very high TND loss. In uh, nationally, I think the average of TND losses for DISCOMs is almost 21%, which means that if a, if a DISCOM is trying to transmit 
100 units of electricity to homes it is only actually able to bill 80 units of that and 20 units get lost in either energy pilferage or it gets lost in transmission captive and off off grid renewable energy generation and reduced electricity intensity intensity so these are the factors which reduce the overall demand for power and this is what increases the demand for power so we want ideally these factors to go down so we want the tnd losses to reduce we want the energy efficiency to go up and we want the intensity to increase and along with this we also want all of this to go up if all of this goes up as it as it is expected to for a country uh, which is growing as fast as india is growing the demand for power is expected to grow manifold in the coming years so now that we have a fair understanding of how sterlite uh, what sterlite does where does it play and what exactly that industry does let's uh, dive back a little and try and understand how sterlite's journey began so sterlite began its overall operations as a as a transmission grid business division of sterlite technologies limited it is here that it started creating projects it started bidding for projects transmission projects creating them developing them and then selling them out to investment trusts in 2016 is when sterlite power transmission limited came into being this is when it demerged or it was transferred as a separate company from sterlite technologies and it uh, came into being as a individual company called sterlite power 2017 is when sterlite started expanding into the uh, international operations by commencing projects in brazil so here what we have to basically understand is sterlite has two major areas of operations and that is india and brazil so india it operates uh, three verticals which we will get to and in brazil it basically does turnkey projects so it creates projects and then transfers it out to their local discom authorities now let's understand the overview of sterlite's business so sterlite basically operates in three uh, business verticals or three verticals uh, individual verticals the first vertical is global infrastructure here what basically sterlite is trying to do is it is trying to bid design construct own and operate power transmission lines so what this basically means in plain english is if say your country or if say indian government wants to connect uh, two power generating sources or a power generating source in a and a area of consumption tcpb or tariff based uh, bidding system uh, is a government authority which creates bids which wherein uh, companies like sterlite power adani transmission uh, kalpatru transmission will bid and then they will get access to such projects when they have access to such projects they will design construct own and operate these power transmission lines and then they will possibly either sell it off to a uh, investment trust or they will sell it off to the government the second line of business is msi or products business here what they basically do is they upgrade and upgrade existing power delivery networks so uh, for a country as old as india there are a lot of power lines which are present which are dated in the sense that they have reduced efficiency they have been damaged they have been battered over the years and these need upgradation and these needs the uh, these need an upgrade in terms of both the uh, uh, energy efficiency and in the terms of their capacity and this is the second line of business for sterlite power the third uh, vertical of business which is put under convergence is basically what sterlite does is it creates an optical wire network an optical wire network is basically used to create a high speed data transmission line and this optical wire network runs yeah okay great i think i got disconnected sorry about that but i guess we are back now so to continue basically what sterlite does is uh it bids for these projects which are brought out by tc tbcb and overall as a percentage of uh, the overall uh, projects which are launched in india sterlite has a staggering 26% market share of all transmission projects which are brought out by the tbcb similar to the indian uh, 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 transmission board brazil brazil's electric electrical electricity authority or anil also has uh, a similar method wherein sterlite bids for these power projects and in brazil sterlite has a market share of almost 13% of all projects auctioned by uh, the brazilian authority between the between the period of january 17 to june 21 what this basically shows us is that sterlite has a massive uh, share of the overall pie 
as far as the transmission development business grows so in india it has more than a 26% stake and in the brazilian market which, which is the only other market in which it is very active it has a 13% market share right and coming to the next uh, let's so now that we have an overall idea of what business terlite is into let's dig a little deeper into the transmission vertical so basically if if i can just cover this a little bit again so this is the area wherein it this it bids for owns designs and uh, creates power transmission lines and then sell, sells it off to other people and this is where it upgrades existing power networks and this is where it creates data uh, lines which run alongside their power delivery networks now we'll go a little further into the transmission vertical so how this basically works is there are interstate transmission projects which are given by the state government or by the central government and various companies bid for these projects in india sterlite has won 17 tbcb projects still uh, date and it has it has now created a huge uh, a strong regulatory regime wherein it, it has a very good knowledge on how to win these projects now once the bidding is done and the project is allotted sterlite goes ahead and uh, starts the development of the entire transmission line the with the years in which sterlite has been uh, operational in this industry it has it has uh, gotten deep innovation and execution skills as far as creating lines goes it has high standards of safety and quality and it it collaborates with other leaders in this space to develop the transmission lines now once the bidding is done and the development is done the last critical vertical which sterlite does is operate so in operations basically what sterlite does is it does the entire onm for the transmission lines and once say the entire project is stabilized it actually asset flips it to an invit and this is a very interesting part or an interesting business uh, dynamic in which sterlite operates is that once the project is stabilized it will sell that project in its entirety to an invit invit is basically an investment uh infrastructure trust which allows which has a sponsor and other investors and this uh invit essentially takes the ownership of that asset pays sterlite a bulk amount of money and then that invit enjoys the future cash flows coming out from that project the major invit which sterlite uses is indigrid invit which is co-sponsored between sterlite power transmission and kkr kkr is one of the largest private equity firms in the globe and kkr has put a lot of money into the invit what you will also see going forward is uh sterlite stake in this invit is also sold by sterlite to kkr in the last year i think and they received a huge sum against their overall holdings in this so what this basically does is it allows sterlite to deleverage its balance sheet so if i if we can just cover this in a little more detail what sterlite would have done is to create a project it would have taken on some debt right it would have raised money either through an ncd or from an nbfc or from a bank it would have invested that money into developing the, that asset and once that asset would have been developed it would have sold it to the invit from the money which it would have received from the invit for the sale of the asset it would have then paid off its debt and thus deleveraged its balance sheet coming next to the transmission vertical statistics currently sterlite has a total of 30 power transmission projects under its fold 17 are in india 13 are in brazil leading to a overall capacity of 26000 mva and 13000 uh, ckm lines under its under commissioning or under construction so if you remember we saw that india has a total uh, ckm of close to 450000 like uh, kilometers currently out of that 13000 or 14000 uh, approximately ckm is held by sterlite it has 16 operational assets one under the ppp model PPP is public private partnership model it has 21 substations and a 31% market share by tariff of interstate projects under competitive bidding it has done a overall capital expenditure of close to 40000 crores holding 68 ehv transmission lines and it has achieved a availability of 99.78% these are all staggering numbers for a company which is less than 20 years old now that we have a fair bit of handle on how the transmission vertical works let's also see how the uh, other verticals in which sterlite operates work out so apart from transmission it is into two businesses one is msi and the other is products msi is basically upgrading the existing power systems and products is 
selling uh, sale of conductors or doing certain other turnkey projects for certain other parties msi also includes the uh, projects where it uh, runs the data lines along with the power 